then the whole gate theory of pain, which you might've learned about in medical school, the idea that there's some competing pathways and one, if you give a non-noxious stimulus, it can override the pain stimulus, was actually demonstrated with peripheral stimulation in the face. So um, there's a scientific paper, I think I have it on the next slide, Wall and Sweet did something that we would never be allowed to do anymore. They did experiments on themselves. They basically placed an electrode in their own face and determined that they, it affected their ability to sense something. So here's the paper. Um, so Wall and Sweet, this is 1967 in science. Uh, needle electrode insulated acceptance that were applied to, to our infraorbital nerves. A tingling or buzzing sensation was evoked near threshold in the sensory region of the nerve. This was on themselves. It was not unpleasant and always tolerable for an indefinite period, which is a very uh, biased perspective since they're not being stimulated chronically. Um, but this was the first ever demonstration that stimulation can abolish pain in a human subject, and they just happen to do it on themselves. Uh, but this is the fundamental paper that gave rise to the field of spinal cord stimulation, as well as peripheral stimulation for pain, which I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about. Um, so uh, the first implant was ever done uh, with externalized leads for CRPS, and uh, we've gotten to a percutaneous area now where we can put electrodes uh, in the spine um, or in the face or anywhere else in the body near a peripheral nerve. This is the gate theory, the idea that there's a painful stimulus going through the C fibers that goes to the nociceptive pathways. If you give an electrical stimulation or even a non-electrical but non-noxious stimulus, it can outcompete and suppress the signals that are coming through the pain pathways and therefore suppress the pain. Um, I tell my patients that this is very analogous to, you know, if you hurt yourself, sometimes you like to rub the area that hurts that makes it feel better. Same idea, except we're rubbing it with electricity. Different places you can put uh, electrodes, you can put them in the supraorbital region if you have supraorbital pain, but it's not classic trigeminal neuralgia or classic trigeminal pain. You know, uh, something I've forgotten to say up until this point, if you have bilateral facial pain, big red flag, not trigeminal neuralgia. Um, although some people have pain that fluctuates from one side to another, it usually settles down on one side if someone's if we're going to target the pain in a trigeminal neuralgia type fashion. Um, when I think about peripheral stimulation, I'm looking for pain that is generally inconsistent with trigeminal neuralgia. So that burning, chronic, aching pain, a location that's very localized to an area that I can target with some electrodes in the face. They failed botulinum toxin. They have incomplete control of medications and hopefully have lack of neuropsychological contraindications. And there is a fair number of studies. In this case, you can see bilateral supraorbital, bilateral occipital stimulators um, showing that when you do occipital nerve stimulation or supraorbital uh, nerve stimulation, different types of nerve stimulation, that you can get high rates of efficacy. Um, you know, upwards of 88% of people have greater than 50% decrease, 100% greater than 50% relief. You know, lots of high numbers here. The nice thing about this is you might say, well, who are you going to use this for? How do you select patients? Since you can do trials, you can put them in patients with the wires coming out of their face and they can come back, you know, they can try it for a week at home and see if it's pain relief. You know, I just um, have done this for patients with all different kinds of pain that I couldn't necessarily explain um, and that I didn't have great treatments for, but I said, you know, let's try something that's off label to see if we can try and give you relief. This figure is useful because it shows how the stimulator could provide relief because, you know, if we take it far enough, you can cover the supratrochlear nerve, supraorbital nerve, as well as the zygomatic or temporal and get broad coverage of those areas of the face if that's where the pain is. You can also put them in the infraorbital region. Uh, so you can put it above the eye, below the eye, and I've even put them in the mandibular region as well, depending on where we want to target. Just to highlight, um, this is uh, a paper from using uh, occipital and supraorbital nerve stimulation for various headache disorders. So again, not being picky about what you do. On average, there's a significant pain relief in these patients, uh, percent improvement in their vast. Look, if you look on an individual basis, the majority of patients have at least 50% pain improvement. If you look at it, 30%, there's a lot more patients that have pain improvement and um, there's significant reduction in their use of other pain medications. So this idea, if you, someone has atypical facial pain or non trigeminal neuralgia pain, I want, what I'm trying to highlight for all of you is don't close the door. Don't think, well, we only can do microvascular decompression, percutaneous treatments, and um, SRS. 
we can consider, you know, as I talked a little about deep brain stimulation, I talked about sphenopalatine ganglion blocks or stimulation. Here we're talking about peripheral stimulation, supraorbital and infraorbital nerve stimulation. So there's lots of options that you can think about as pain gets more and more complex. Now these peripheral stimulators aren't meant to be in the face, so they have complications. You can have lead migrations, they can be infected, um, <clears throat> there can be fibrosis around the leads that can affect responses as well. So in terms of peripheral stimulation, there's really no high quality studies. It's off label, but it's good when there's localized pain that's not really TN or trigonal neuralgia. They fail conservative therapies. They, we should try and block it first. That might give you some information, but it's easy to trial. Um, and so my approach has been, you know, someone comes in, they have non-classic trigonal neuralgia. They don't even have the, the electrical stabbing type pain that trigonal neuralgia like. I will uh, switch these other modalities like peripheral stimulation. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.